We meet in the name of God who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Hello, I'm the Reverend Kate Botley and welcome to this service for the fourth Sunday of Advent. We're joined today by our friends at Marie Curie. I'm here at Christ Church in Belper in Derbyshire, which has been a parish church witnessing to God's love in this community in good times and not so good times for the last 150 years and more. Welcome. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask his forgiveness and peace. Friend of sinners, you bring hope in our despair. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Healer of the sick, you give strength in our weakness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Destroyer of evil, you bring life in our dying. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's time now to light our Advent candle. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us, whom you call, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen.
2020, the strangest year I and most people have ever experienced. I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer eight years ago, and I have secondary cancer in my spine. This means the cancer is no longer curable. Living through a pandemic with a life limiting illness hasn't been easy. Due to my diagnosis and medication, I was advised in March that I would be part of the two million people shielding in the UK. I've been unable to have my usual routine appointments with my oncologist. The local hospice has been unable to run in-person support groups. The loss of these services has increased the feelings of isolation and anxiety at times. Added to this has been the heartache of not spending the precious time I have with loved ones, especially missing out on many months of seeing my first grandson, being unable to kiss and cuddle him. One thing I was pleased to be able to do was support Marie Curie's Scrap Six Months campaign, which called on the government to make it quick and easy for anyone living with a terminal illness to get the benefits they need. My personal story was featured in the press and in Parliament, and my own issue with the six month rule was resolved. I am very grateful for Marie Curie's help with this, and all the fantastic work the charity continues to carry out to support people living with terminal illness and their loved ones. So how have I coped during this time? My personal philosophy, both in facing my illness and the lockdown restrictions, is to take one day at a time. I also think it helps having a purpose and goals. I've remained remotely active in the local community during the pandemic, and I've been touched by people's kindness. It has been uplifting to see volunteers looking out for the elderly and vulnerable. The increased community spirit is a positive outcome of this strange year. I will also recall 2020 as an amazing year to take time to enjoy nature, listening to birdsong, observing the changes as the trees and plants blossomed in the garden and the slow, steady change in the seasons. I do feel there is light at the end of a very long, dark tunnel regarding the pandemic. I hope for brighter times ahead for us all. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you, and when you walk through fire, you shall not be burnt, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt 
as your ransom Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honoured and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I'll bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, who I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, my name is Clive. I'm 47. I'm from Gloucester. I, am, I haven't worked since February this year. It, it's been a difficult year being separated from people. I mean, at the moment, I stay with mum and dad, which is probably a good thing because they're in their 80s. Um, just going out for them, making sure they're okay. Because I mean, you know, we've got people all quite worried, really. A bit of a fear running through the country at the moment. But like I said, prayed, kept my faith. And there is going to be times when days have got, gone bad and things like that. But I think as long as you keep your faith, keep praying, then the Lord will prevail in the end. You know, he's capable of doing anything. Nothing's impossible. All things are possible. And you know, and it gives you the strength to get through this difficult time. Um, like I said, I've applied for a lot of jobs. Nothing is yet. We're very worried with Christmas coming up, not being able to contribute to the household, to the family, put food on the table. But um, yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've got what I need. And like I said, there's a lot of people out there with that. And I actually was quite worried what Christmas was going to be like, be, you know, a bit depressing, so, so to speak. But I mean, this morning when I woke up, I received an email. Um, inquiring about a job that I applied for. I should receive some details soon. And so yesterday when I was having a bad day, just worrying about Christmas, today, the Lord has answered my prayers. And I think that as long as you can keep your faith, keep focused and stay focused on him, then whatever your situation is never gonna to be too great for him. And in the end, things will get better.
name is Dorothy and I'm one of the chaplains at Great Orham Street Hospital for Children. The most meaningful part of my Christmas is the Midnight Mass we hold in the hospital chapel. It's the place that makes most sense of the Christmas story for me, which is of course centred around a family with an uncertain future, far from home and caring for a vulnerable child. It isn't difficult to make the connections with the first Christmas when I see the parents we support, each longing for home and praying for hope for their beloved child. I see children who in their unconditional love and trust point us to the Christ child who shares our joys and sorrows. And I see colleagues holding a candle of hope in the care they offer day and night. A children's hospital on Christmas Eve is undoubtedly a place where the hopes and fears of all the years are tangible. And what I know to be true is that those hopes and fears are met in the birth of Jesus. We may not be in hospital, but many of us have had a difficult year. We may feel lost or far from all that we know or frightened about our future or indeed be grieving for a loved one who has died. And I believe that in the gospel we're about to hear, there are tidings of comfort and joy that each of us need, whatever our circumstances this Christmas. May you be strengthened by the words of the angel to Mary. Do not be afraid. Good morning, everybody. My name's Reverend Juliet Stevenson. I'm the director of the Good Funeral Company in the Diocese of Liverpool. And this morning, we've been thinking particularly about grief and loss. In my work, I see grief and sadness, loss and bereavement. And since the first lockdown, I have watched families grieve in so many different circumstances and different ways. People who have sadly lost loved ones to all sorts of reasons, all sorts of ages. Some sadly have lost their lives to COVID. And not being able to celebrate the funeral in the way that they would normally have done so has been very hard for people. And so their grief and bereavement journey has been very difficult. Christmas time particularly will be hard for all of these families, not least because they have a significant loved one not with them around their Christmas table, but because they can't come together as larger groups of family and to reminisce and to talk about their loved ones and to share stories and to share the joy that comes with Christmas. And the dark times can encroach. And yet the Christmas story is about light coming into the darkness. And the darkness of grief and bereavement can be pierced by the light of Christ at Christmas time. I myself have a sadness every Christmas since my father died, him not being with us is a great loss because he reveled in the Christmas joy. He loved coming to church. He loved singing carols and being part of the festivities. And so my life too is challenged when I look at my Christmas table and there is one less there. And yet the Christmas story gives me hope, gives hope to my family that all will be well because God knows our brokenness and God's light shone in the darkness to bring his child to save us and the world. This morning's reading comes from the Gospel of St Luke. I'm going to read that to you now. Chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call him Jesus. He shall be great, and he will be the son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, 
and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her, she who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it to be to me according to your word. And the angel departed her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer and sustainer. Amen. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent, and it might just feel like everything is about ready for Christmas. But the fact is that the story is just beginning as one of the central characters moves onto the stage. Mary, mother of Jesus. And so the scene is set, ready for the perfect story of Christmas to begin. Except it's not perfect at all. I wonder if as you've put all your decorations around the house and onto the tree, you always find room for that one that you've kept for years, that one that you hold on to for sentimental reasons, or that one that's a bit wonky and torn because the children or the grandchildren made it for you. In our family, it's a small musical plastic crib. It's well over 60 years old. And the shepherds, lambs and wise men are meant to go round and round in a circle, sort of endlessly visiting the little family in the stable. But by now, one of the wise men has gone decidedly wonky. And the shepherds has gone missing, the sheep have fallen off and Joseph has disappeared altogether. But we still keep it and put it out every year because it's precious to us. It holds memories, even though it's a bit broken. This Christmas might be feeling more than a bit broken. It might feel broken because you can't travel to be with the people you'd like to be with, or broken because financially you can't provide in the way you would want to provide, or perhaps broken because your relationships have fractured and fallen apart under the strain of the past few months. Or maybe you're living with a life-changing diagnosis. Or perhaps it's just broken because the person you love is no longer in the world. Actually, every Christmas will have some of those feelings and moments in it. But maybe this year, they just feel as if they've come into sharper focus. And alongside that, all the advertising, the talk and the media helps us to think we've got to create the best Christmas ever, the one that is just going to be perfect for everyone. And all of that places unrealistic expectations on us, when perhaps all we want is a few moments to feel just a little bit sad. Yet as we get ready to hear the story once again, we discover it's always been a story of light and shadows, comfort and joy. It's always been the promise of Advent spoken into broken lives and a broken world. Because after all, it's when we're broken that we need to hear words of comfort and joy. The story of Mary is not a perfect story. It's the story of a young unmarried woman living in a small village who will be criticized and condemned as she discovers she is pregnant. We don't know that much about her situation. But so much of our art and our Christmas cards show her living in a perfectly neat and ordered world. But in reality, she was living her ordinary modest life under the shadow of the Roman Empire in an occupied country and with all the challenges that that presented. And it's into that situation that the angel speaks the great words of promise. The Lord is with you. Nothing is impossible to God. That's the promise she will hold on to, even as she makes her journey to Bethlehem and gives birth to her child in a stable. 
And Mary is not the only woman whose name we hear today. Her cousin Elizabeth has not had a perfect life either. For her, there has been the terrible pain of longing for many, many years for a child that never comes and all the grief that that entails. And it's to these two women that God speaks the promise of a future, of healing and of light in the darkness. And that's the same promise that God spoke to his people generations long gone, the great words of comfort that we heard in the prophet Isaiah. That's the Advent promise, that God is with us and will meet us where we are in our lives that are such a mixture of light and shade. The poet Anne Lewin, in one of her poems simply called Merry Christmas, poses the question to us all. How can we be midwives to the love of God in our world? And in these last few days before Christmas Day itself, perhaps you and I can think about how we live out that Advent promise, bringing that message of hope to those around us. And this year, we've learned such a lot about what it means to be alongside those who are bereaved, to notice those who are struggling with life. And the things we've learned, those principles, can be the same ones that we use right now to reach out to everyone who feels a bit, well, a bit broken this Christmas, for whatever reason. And it's as simple as contact, listen, bless. Just get in touch with someone just as the angel got in touch with Mary and Mary got in touch with Elizabeth. Do it in whatever way works for you. Drop a card round, make a phone call, arrange to meet someone on social media. And when you do get in touch, listen. Listen to each other's stories. Listen to the stories of delight and listen to the stories of sadness and respond to those stories as Mary and Elizabeth did. Make space for all the mixed emotions of this year and then keep on blessing with those little kindnesses that mean so much to people and that somehow in a small way reflect something of the great love of God that came into the world at Christmas. It might be the unexpected homemade gift on a doorstep. It might be simply a wave from a window. However you do it, we too can help to share that message of hope. And as we do so, we might just find that the broken Christmas has become very precious, just as the broken nativity turned out to be very precious in my family. Christmas will begin to contain a new depth of meaning that stays long after the decorations have been put away, because we will hold on to the deep hope that comes in Advent, the hope that's not just about having a nice Christmas this year, but it's hope in the truth of a God who comes amongst us to share our lives, to reveal his love and feel our pain. We will find comfort in our sadnesses and we will find joy in the love we discover as we realize again the promise that each and every one of us is precious to God. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the world God loves. Dear Lord, in our uncertain world, we bring before you our concerns. We are worried about our world with the evidence of so much cruelty and greed. We pray that you will move among the nations so that the barriers of fear, suspicion, and hatred may crumble and that people may be united in the bonds of justice and peace. 
We pray for the leaders of our nations that they may gain wisdom to understand the important issues of our time. Help them to have courage to uphold what they believe to be just and right. We pray that you would give strength and wisdom to the church throughout the world in sharing the good news of your love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, you have commanded us to love one another and to serve each other's needs. Help us in our homes and in our lives to be helpful and considerate, forbearing and forgiving, so that family life and daily living may be strengthened and sustained. We pray especially for children and those who care for them, that they will be loved and protected. We remember those families who are caught in financial difficulties, those who face unemployment and hardship. May they know that you love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for those who are ill, especially those known to us. We ask that your tender mercy will reach them and fill their lives with your peace and healing grace. We pray for doctors, nurses and other health and social care professionals. We pray for all the Marie Curie staff who are caring for people every day in our hospices and in people's homes. We pray for family members who are carers that they may gain the strength and courage to continue to care during difficult times. May they too know your love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for people who are living their last weeks and days of life on earth. May they know that you are with them and give them the courage and faith to trust in you. We remember before God those, those who have died and we pray for those who have been bereaved. You turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, keep us close to you as we wait for the coming of the Christ child this Christmas and bless us with your peace. Amen. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for our service today. And thank you too to our friends at Marie Curie. All that's left for me to do is to pray God's blessing prayer. So may God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.